Greetings. The life is Asian, so we definitely eat a lot of rice around here. One of the things that's required when you eat a lot of rice is a good rice cooker. That's basically what you have in front of you. This is the uh, oyster unit. It's pretty darn good, but uh, we go through them fairly rapidly. There's been several of them in-house that have had varying failures, and I started looking at them recently and figuring out how they work and how to fix them. Number one failure that we've had is this cord gets twisted. So you'll see on the other one I'm going to show you, it's been replaced with a different cord. The other thing that happens to them is this is a latching circuit. When you pull this in, it latches in, and that's the cooking action. If it doesn't latch in, the rice cooker won't cook. Here's that same unit with the bottom cover removed and a partial shot. The way the latching mechanism works on these is when you pull the lever down, it makes a contact, which is right here. Releasing it releases a contact. That pulls in a latching circuit, which allows the cooker to cook. Then uh, the electronics in it times out and releases it when the rice is cooked. But in the case of the, the old unit, which you'll see shortly, this contact wasn't latching in. What would happen, of course, you have to multiply try to pull the lever down to get the unit to latch and start to cook. Here's the old unit, partially disassembled, showing the lower contact that was hidden by the upper contact arm in the previous part of the video. You can clearly see a small burn spot right there on the corner. That's what needs to be cleaned up and hopefully put this thing back into proper working order without any trouble. The next uh, portion of the video, I'll show you what the upper arm looks like, and we'll take a look at it when it's completely reassembled and ready to cook again. Here's a partial view of that upper control arm. You can see, clearly see that little burn mark right in the middle of it. I'm gonna clean uh, both upper and lower contact arms off with the Dremel tool and that should take care of my problem. Then I'll put it all back together and we'll see how it works. Okay, and here's the upper and lower contact arms after I've cleaned them with the Dremel, and this should take care of the problem. Those little burn spots will be just enough to where sometimes it wouldn't make electrical contact. Now, I don't mind telling you this thing was a pain to put back together. You really can't do it without additional disassembly. So the actual actuator arm had to be removed, which is here. And the screw on the inside that holds this assembly together was removed. That allowed me to push the button assembly back in the inside of the unit where I could get to it to put this little assembly here back together. It's impossible to do horizontally and it's too tight to get your hands in there. So I had to dis disconnect the three wires that were going across the top here, then go in and line up the actuator arm by bending the upper contact arm to get the points back in the center. Now it should work much better than it even did before. Okay, here's all the tools you'll need to do exactly what I just did here. A medium uh, number two screwdriver, seven thirty seconds Scott socket for that little nut. Needle nose pliers, these are magnetized, which can be both a blessing and a curse. Number one Phillips screwdriver, short, and a Dremel tool with a wire wheel. Here's everything fully assembled and ready to roll. Working exactly like it should be. That wraps this one up. Take care, y'all. Uh, come back and see me again soon.